And you got to consider what kind of state of grace these guys must have been in to create something that's that powerful for that long, right? And um, if you think about it, all the parts on a Gibson were Gibson parts, and all the parts on a Fender were Fender parts, and all the parts on a Gretsch were Gretsch parts. And then everything became an amalgamation. It's just now getting to the point where I'm using our tuning pegs, our nuts, our inlays, our bridges, our, our pickups, our cases, our knobs, our switches. This is still a reflection of an old Gibson part here. But it's our boomerang plate, you know, it's our body shape. But that took a long time for me to eject out of the, the love that I had for humbucking pickups and fender parts. And, you know, it was an amalgamation in my, you know, in my, in my world. So in 1958, this was made in 61, 1958 would be debatably the greatest year of vintage guitars, right? So if you have averaged the blur, that would be the year. I was two years old. I was in diapers. I wasn't invited to that party. <laughs> so what they do now is a lot of the companies, they'll make a reissue of this. So since somebody can't own a 61 Les Paul, they'll get a reflection of it by getting a copy. right? And they'll put a bunch of dings in it, which is putting war wounds in babies. It's like a baby born and pulling pull, pull scars. I just don't agree, but whatever. I, I hate that. Huh? I hate that. Yeah, well, you know something? You do it yourself. It's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen. Don't do it where it's spoken. We call it War Wounds and Babies, but i got to tell you, I'm starting to think that if, if I can sell more guitars that way, I would do it. This is a very difficult market right now. Very, very difficult. Our industry has lost its footing. This is a wonderful store because the people in this place know what they're talking about. Jack and I and Michael have been friends for decades. Since 1994. Yeah. So, long, long, long time, and uh, I did my first thing when I walked in the store is I must love you, you know, because I was, I was up at 6 in the morning headed for D.C. this morning, we, we got back up here. So, that, you know, this kind of shop is what is the resurgence in our industry. People are walking away a little more from the big boxes and coming to stores like this where people know what they're talking about, which is very, very cool. Yes, very you know what's cool? You know what I don't know. Yeah. You tell me. Listen. That I already took a picture of. Did you take a picture of what? Are they, what the kid taking the uh, bus? I'm, I'm ahead of you, baby. <laughs> hey, there's even a hole in the door. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all over it. Jack and Paul were friends up until. <laughs> Michael, come look. I took a picture of the kid learning how to play guitar through the glass. I thought it was cute as a button. Oh, cool. So what I'm yelling is you, Jack, come over and you said I'm in the middle of something. That's yeah. what I was trying to show you. Oh, okay. The kids <laughs> playing through the... I mean, look, look at the look on this. Yeah. Right? So in many ways, sometimes people still argue it is today. So I start fixing this guitar, pull the pickup out, <coughs> looking at the neck joint. There's no little strips of wood in there holding the neck in place because the, many of the times the old necks were put in and they used to use shims to make sure the neck stayed in there until the glue dried. So I start finishing this guitar. There's no fret buzz. How can there be no fret buzz? Every guitar that comes in here has fret buzz. This doesn't have fret buzz. i got to get to know this Paul Smith. So that, who's Paul Smith? Oh, it's this guy down in Maryland. Give the guitar back to the guy and say, where'd you get this guitar? Oh, I found it out in New York City. Oh, all right. A couple weeks later, guy brings a bass in. Paul Reed Smith bass. Paul Reed Smith bass? Never saw a Paul Reed Smith. Where did this come from? I got to find out who this Paul Reed Smith guy is. So DDC. You guys are around this area. Remember DDC? Paul Dickstein. Paul Dickstein's place. Paul Dickstein gets Paul Reed Smith guitars. And I go in there. He's got four of them. I thought I hit the lottery. Four of these Paul Reed Smith guitars. How, how do you get to get these Paul Reed Smith guitars? Oh, it's this guy down in Maryland. He starts telling me about the shop, about the bar, making guitars for Carlos Santana and, 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 and Nancy Wilson from Hart, Howard Lease. I'm like, are you kidding me? I had to get these guitars. Well, 
they already had a dealer. And unfortunately, people that know the area for many years know that Paul Dickstein suddenly passed away. And Paul ran a great store. <coughs> so for many years, I'd call. Can I get Paul Reese with the guitars? No, we, we don't we don't have we can't supply the dealers that we have. So for nine months, I called every day. And I finally get to talk to Mike Dealey. And I said, why can't I, I, I got to talk to somebody, because the secretary's answering the phone, and she keeps saying, she knew my name by now. <laughs> Jack, we're still not getting any dealers. I said, can't I talk to somebody there? Finally, I get to D Michael Dealey, and he said, we make 20 guitars a day, we got a two-year back order, we can't get any guitars to you, we're sorry, and I'm getting PO'd. I said, you know, all I want is a chance. Jack when he's upset. <laughs> it's not pretty. I said, all I want is a chance to sell these things. I know I can sell them. And about two weeks later, he said, all right, I'll give you a chance, but i got to talk to Paul about it. And in 1994, I got my first Paul Reese Smith guitar. And that began this relationship. Now, most of the time when you're a store owner or get involved in this, you never really deal with the guy at the top. It's always the sales rep, it's always the inside guy. It wasn't like that. It was like, oh, you want to talk to Paul? I'll get him on the phone for you. I'm like, yeah, right. Hi, this is Paul, can I help you? I'm like, what, what about this tuner with the collar? Explain that. Oh, you know, you put the string in like this and it's a cam and it does this and it locks it in. I'm like, I can't believe I talked to this guy. And it just blossomed from there. So when people talk about Oh, do you know who Paul Reed Smith is? It's like, yeah, I got his name, my number in my phone. <laughs> yeah, sure you do. It's like, no, really, I do. <clears throat> and so it's much different. The relationship with me and Paul and Michael and Jim Cullen and the gang out of PRS, it's not really dealer to manufacturer. It's really like a family. And, you know, I wanted Paul to come up here so you guys could share in some of the stuff that I get to share in every day. So I got turned yeah, on. To to <laughs> I've been counting. This yeah. is Fender Gibson territory, right? Yeah. There's a one Fender and one Gibson, right? Yes. And I count one, two, three, four, five, six, Thirty PRS. There's one up front too. That's the one from up front. And there's more in the back. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys give Jack a big hand for that? Guy?